Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to do a quick review of COG Video X latest version. Previously, we saw the 5B models, which are text to video, and here we just have an update of the COG Video X 5B for image to video. There's a slight change for their newer models for image to video, which mainly focuses on image encoding and passing that to the 5B models sampling to generate motions based on your reference image and other settings. Parameters of these models are the same as the 5B text to video model, so the runtime usage, generation speed, and requirements for running this are pretty much the same as the text to video models. What we can do is update the current Comfy UI Cog Video X wrapper from KJ Custom Node, and this one is now able to do image to video and also supports the latest image to video model. Of course, we have the link provided in the GitHub project page. You can download these models. And one thing I have to mention is that we're using the clip model from the T5XXL FP8. Therefore, we don't need to download the COG Video X5B image to video clip encoder folder when we download this. If you download this manually, you can skip this folder. And again, this consumes some storage on your hard disk. So it's not beneficial if you already have the T5 FP8 clip models. I believe many of you have already run Flux and SD3. If you've already downloaded that, then you can reuse this T5 XXL FP8 safe tensors model with the same workflow you use in Flux. Here, I've already downloaded the COG Video X5B image to video models, which are located in the same folder in your Comfy UI as the text to video models, right here as mentioned in the models folder COG videos. We need to create this COG video subfolder and place those 5B or 5B image to video models in the subfolder, which is similar to what's shown here. We've got a models folder, COG videos, and COG Video X 5B image to video folder. Download those files into this folder containing everything. As you can see, I haven't downloaded the text encoder from the Hugging Face page, so we can skip that part and save some storage space on your hard disk, and then we can reuse the T5XXLCLIP and run something like this. This is a very simple example workflow, and it's also available on the GitHub project page. Go to Samples, the Examples subfolder. You can use this COG Videos XI2 v example 01 JSON file. That's the workflow in the Comfy UI that I'm currently showing. These models are also only able to support 6 second videos, but I think that's good enough for short motions like this, like a woman smiling or jumping, running, things like that. It's able to do that, no problem, but the COG Video X image to video model right now I see is not that high quality. If you want to compare it with Runway or Kling AI, those kinds of larger parameter size AI video models, it's not at that level yet. But the good thing is that this can be run locally on your machines, everything running in your Comfy UI, privately and without any restrictions. I think most of you guys will like that. So let's zoom in here. As you can see in Load Image, I load this previously generated AI image here resize it. Remember, the dimensions only support 720 width and 480 height. That's the only size it supports in COG Video X, and pass that to the image encoder for COG Videos, along with the pipeline data. And here is the mask input. So I guess we can do some masking on the existing image. So maybe we can do like a motion brush kind of feature. You can do the mask on here, set only this area to move, and maybe something like that. And you can pass the mask data to this one. We can try that later in the next video. But right now, we're just going through this whole basic workflow first. For the COG video sampler, I guess we don't need to configure anything if you load that in the example workflow. So we're using the scheduler DDIM and the same width and height dimensions, number of frames 49. That's going to be for six seconds from the AI video model. I have tried it with a longer frame number, but it doesn't perform that well. So the best one, of course, is just to follow what they have from the training data or their configuration settings of this AI model. Then we're gonna have the output like this, but of course, we're not satisfied with the low resolution and some morphing. You see, the hand is not going to be perfect. That is what it is for a locally runnable AI video model currently. 
But it's a good start to have a locally runnable AI video model that's able to produce something like that using transformer architecture. We should know that the transformer architecture consumes a lot of memory when it runs. As you know, recently Flux launched, and lots of people should see that running Flux FP16, FP, or even FP8, and the models UNet also consume a lot of memory to run. So that's the downside of transformer architecture. I think the industry has to think about another way, like using Mamba to reduce memory consumption and handle memory better for those next generation AI models. I've done another group of refiners in the Mimic Motions workflow to have a video, a very simple video to video using Animate Diff to smoothen every motion from the Mimic Motions. This is able to bring the groups into this workflow as well. I've just duplicated that group from here from the Mimic Motions and brought it to the COG Video X based on the example workflow in the COG Video X wrapper. After generating the result of this, I'm going to bring the image frames to this Animate Diff Refiner group and it will be passed to this get notes, set it for the VAE encoder and also for our control net for animated control net checkpoint models to smoothen every single movement and get some better results for our generated videos. So that will be another way to do it for a little better enhancement of your AI video result. Here I'll be trying another image and we'll see how that works. And that will be running together with the animate diff refiner. For example, like this image, just a normal stock image from Pexels. Here we can do some prompts, making it move how we want. Like here, water drops, motions, and a very simple text prompt. We don't need to do too much complex for image to video. Let's see how that performs. Lastly, it will be passed to the animate diff refiner, so it starts running in the text encoder, as you can see right here and it passed the image encoder from our load image. Now it starts to do the sampling for videos and we'll wait for the result here. Okay, so here's the result. As you can see, there's a little change difference in the animate diff refiner because of the sampling steps that it processed. Although I set the CFG very low, it still happens. The drop of water in the first one second is missing. I mean, it's not the same as what we have in the original video. In COG Video X, there should be this one drop of water from the starting frames using our image. And right here, as you can see, this is the first frame from what we have. And COG Video X generates this drop of water and starts the motions, doing its job creating that video motion. In here, we have a little difference in the animate diff group. Although there's a little more detail on the water wave in the result of animate diff, we're missing that drop of water from the first frame. So therefore, it brings us to the things we have to use in animate diff. If we want to reproduce the same video as what we have from the input, but we just want to enhance the motions and all the little details of water waves. Here we have to do unsampling steps before animate diff sampling, which I'll talk about this in the upcoming video. But here it is. This video talks about COG Video X because it just updated. I just wanted to do a quick one following up on the latest update of these models. So this is work in theories, the animate diff refiners. We'll have to do a little more modification on this to make it accessible. The same motions starting from the reference image. Then that will be perfect. So talking about AI videos. I did Runway Gen 2 48 hour contest with two of my friends, creating this short film in 48 hours. So that was last weekend. It was a pretty good experience. You know, in a short time, we created very creative styles of videos, like a horror story with a Japanese house, abandoned house. And then there's three kids running through the forest, going to this house. They experience some horrible things inside, eventually find a tunnel to go through. And there's some unrealistic transitions and some, you know, we're using AI videos to do things that aren't possible to do in the real world using that mixed horror movie. So that was a pretty cool experience, pretty creative things that we did. And the challenge, uh, what I'll say about AI videos right now, is the control. We have a lack of controllable motions for our characters and whatever objects we want to move around in each video scene. Like... For example, in COG Video X that we just demonstrated here, what if I want to control the water and other motions? Not just this little drop motion, maybe something else, some other motions. 
For example, here's in my runway contest video. If we want to make this movement of the kid holding something in this scene, maybe like grab a stick or an axe to protect himself and try to pull his hand to remove some objects here, we can't do that in the current AI video models. I mean, every model, we're not able to find solutions for that as well. Like this scene, that kid is going, and actually, if that is good, that he can pull up his hand and, you know, flicker a lighter or hold a flashlight, that would be something better. And this scene, like here, we did a lot of trial and error in the text prompts, based on what I have in this image, and I text prompted this scene, these motions of a hand holding a lighter almost 50 times to generate these motions. And finally, that AI video from Runway Gen 3 understood what I needed, and then I could continue my extended video in here until it saw a monster coming up. I mean, currently, right now, in AI videos, there's something that looks cool, very gimmicky, right? In Runway, yes, they have, you know, so far the best quality on the market for AI videos that is able to be used by a normal consumer, the mystery of Sora, and not everyone can use that as well. But I hear that they have no controllable features as well for the AI video. So that's something that I want to look for. If there's no one who can do that, maybe I have to do like a control net feature or models based on some AI video model to make that happen. And that is my thought about AI videos after the two days experience using Runway Gen 3, abusing the click over a few hundred times to generate one scene or some part of these videos. And yeah, that is what I thought. And my other two friends who are doing these videos as well, are having the same thoughts about the lack of control in the current AI video models that we have on the market. So that's it for this video, a review about COG Video X image to video and thoughts about AI videos after I used Runway two days in a row to create this short frame. So I'll see you guys in the next video and have a nice day. See ya.